Greetings, poignant strangers. It is the House of Care update. It is 5.17pm on the 3rd of the 8th of the 21st of the 2000th. Oh, hey! It is also Tuesday of week two, and I have just completed my second class of the week. Uh, so it's the second week of semester. We have just had a really good run. And just wanted to, you know, pass comment for a second, because I've, I think that there is a lot to be said for not going on a Monday anymore. Uh, there's a bunch of, so my students in the day class are super keen and enthusiastic. There's still a, it's early in the season, uh, and I'm trying not to compare the week 10 to 12 of last year with the weeks 1 to 3 of this year. Uh, people are picking up, they're starting to get comfortable with what is a completely unexpected <laughs> um, dealing with me is a bit of a challenge um, the hyperkinetic gravity thing that speaks really super fast when they're excited and definitely gets more excited as the ca caffeine kicks in and the session rolls on longer but also uh, things that I do in class that are just genuinely not the same as my colleagues um, I am very driven by audience feedback. If I ask, I want to know. I don't ask for the express purpose of going, ha ha, you may have wanted green, I shall give you purple. It's like, no. When I run a poll, and I run a poll for something like, well, as I did tonight, um, Zoom's got this function where I can push out the, I can share a slide into the Zoom rooms now. And I ran one session with slide and I ran one session without slide and that was a moment of going then at the end I ran a poll and said which do you prefer which do you want and I got a result and the result is they do want the slides into the zoom rooms so from next week onwards that's how it's going to go for the day class for the day walkers will get that but I know there's always that sort of sense of suspicion of the well why are you asking uh, there's a lot of there's been a lot of times then at ANU with the students I've taught where there's a real defensiveness. They don't want to give you opinions. They don't want to tell you stuff. And it's kind of like they must have had a bad experience. They must have had a moment where someone's gone, so tell me what you, tell me, student, what do you think? <gasps> You're wrong! It's like, no, no, that's, that's one, that's not a nice thing to do to students. Two, that really doesn't encourage students to student. And three, um, if you're the kind of person who's basically betraying, walking students into traps to betray them for that sort of purpose, then swift uppercut. Apply a swift uppercut to yourself. But, you know, I, I say this as someone who's been a rogue. I've done, I've set traps. I've, but I, also, I'm the rogue who goes and says, hey, there's a trap. I've set a trap. Hello, trap over here. Because I'm about to settle as a brick to the forehead. Uh, but at the same time, like this is again one of the challenges I'm facing is I'm trying to get through an environment where there's a lot of uncertainty around, you know, I go and say, please give me feedback, and students like mm, not 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 talking to lecturer, admitting weakness in front of lecturer is bad. So I, I'm dealing with some of that at the moment. But this is also why I've hired a tutor. So the tutor can... People can fail in front of the tutors and feel safe and not fail in front of me and feel safe. So it's the safety first. That's the protocol. Uh, the other super exciting... <laughs> yeah, tonight on super exciting things. Um, ANU released its corporate strategy for the next four years yesterday and released its uh, graduate outcomes this morning. So last night's class had the discussion about, hey, ANU's just got a strategy. You should totally check it out. This afternoon's class was, hey, there are graduate attributes that we're working towards now. You should totally check this out. Plus, you should see last night's strategy. Rolling in content from like three hours ago, rewriting a slide in the opening 10 minutes, like three minutes after the start of the show you're still tinkering with the slide because you got your content you want your content to be that up to date and fresh and you've seen a cool thing you want to incorporate it um 
can't always advocate it as a smart way to do things, but I can always advocate it as my way to do things. So that is uh, definitely, as far as State of Cat goes, that is absolutely as me as I can get, is to go, well, I could not do this thing that I've only encountered three minutes ago, or, but what if for students? So that part of me is still, still live, and uh, the legend of me walking across the, from my office at Griffith University on the second floor, walking to the lecture theatre, Northern Theatres, with uh, the late 90s laptop in one arm, so I still writing the slides because I'd come up with an idea 10 minutes beforehand and it took me three minutes to walk to the class. So I had seven minutes on the console, unplugged, grabbed all the gear and kept going as I was walking across to just get this thing, get this idea down. So that hasn't gotten any less um, worse now I've got Zoom, and it's like 30 seconds to show time, 30 seconds to show time, still working. But it's cool. Well, and I can make edits in there. I'm now using a 10-minute intermission, so thank you GCW Wrestling and AEW for getting me used to being able to just have dead air and go intermission and just have 10 minutes where I'm not creating... Well, 10 minutes where experiences are taking place in the breakout rooms, but it's not me making the content. And that was the other thing I wanted to sort of put to out into the world of um, cat experience of the evening. So, in a two-hour class tonight, it was a 10-minute intermission, 15-minute exercise, and a 20-minute exercise. So, that's math. Why am I doing that? About 45 minutes of the two hours was, like, the there is nothing for me to do in terms of contributing content. So part of the reason I'm probably ending up recording more of these after I finish a class is I've got to get some pent up, I was in front of a stage and I said nothing out of my system. But also that was the thing I started to think about is that, you know, when I started in the game, back in the day, look seriously, 1997, uh, I've got to find the back in the day generator which tells you how long how far back it is before you can say back in the day. Uh, but 97, that's when I first started teaching. So 95, I did my honours degree. 96, um, it was first year of my PhD. I did some tutoring. I did intro to marketing and market research. I think 96. 97, I got my first uh, lecturing commission. I was teaching a uh, casual contract lecture. Uh, I was teaching social marketing. 98, I finished my thesis in August. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's coming to my, uh, my thesis is coming to its birthday. Uh, August 1998, that's whatever the date is this Saturday. I think it's the 7th. But when I started, when I was teaching, we were old school. Like, I was, I'm talking overhead projectors and PowerPoint not PowerPoint, overhead transparencies. I was at the University of Queensland Law School 1992 when they rolled in the first PowerPoint projection. And it rolled in on a cart. It was a video projector. It had its own cart. God knows what size computer was underneath it. Uh, and it was just cumbersome and it was tested, though so I was in the room when they tested it out for the first time. So as far as being around teaching innovations, I got to witness one as a student. But still, we were old school. Uh, we were preachers. We stood at our lecterns and we, you know, I have done fire and brimstone lectures where I have held the edge of the podium, claw grip on, and gone full preacher mode. Fire, the brimstone, the everything else. And that's gone. I, that's, that is the old days. We're not going back to that. We're not going to have four. There is no reason to ever again put 400 undergraduate students into a room on a Friday night where there's two hours of me talking and no hours of them doing anything but listening. 
that world's gone. Uh, I don't, I think it's good, it's gone. I miss it. I absolutely loved that moment. I, that times where uh, at Griffith University, Northern Theatre One, where I was pushing as far and as hard past the envelope as I could, where I delivered a course in the advertising, I started the lecture sitting in the back row. I delivered the lecture because so we finally got a remote wireless mouse. So I don't know if we had that or I was just how I was doing it. But I was lecturing from different points in the theatre. I would rather than stand at the podium. I was bouncing about across the seats. I was I was doing it different. And because it was part of the, that night's course content was to connect the idea of the creativity, to break the expected, to change the mold, but also to say there is discomfort in what we're doing. There is it, this is an uncomfortable thing for you to experience. Would you be happier if I was down the front behind the lectern? And the students are like, hell yes we would. Yeah. But... And then I get down there and be like, okay, but why how do we what let's um, let's talk about this. Let's let's go um understand what's just happened here. And tonight in the marketing, I got my students to play with the Neo City site and I got them to play with the Wix site. But I got them to be uncomfortable. And when they talked about this stuff at the end, they talked about compatibility. They used they didn't use the words of the Rogers ninety five, which is basically apparently my life this year is going to be the Rogers nineteen ninety five traits of innovation model. Which is cool because that was what my thesis was about and embedded. But they talked about how this wasn't compatible. They they didn't know code, so they didn't have a reason to find Neo Cities to be pleasing. Um, they felt Wix was much nicer because it made more sense because it was uh, aesthetic and movement. It wasn't about building the code; it was about assembling the parts, which was totally awesome. Um, I'm down for this. I think this is great. I think this is about saying. I don't need to carve the Lego from scratch. I want to build the model with the pieces. I don't have to print my own Lego in order to enjoy building Lego. So totally down for this. Uh, and yeah, it's been really interesting with this semester, just getting the students, we're two weeks in, with four events, two sessions each. Got the tutorials kicking off on Thursday. Forum traffic isn't quite there yet. Forum traffic is beginning to pick up. But getting, knowing, knowing that what I'm needing is I'm needing my opinion leaders. They're starting to emerge. And I'm needing my people who go first to say it, to let the others know it's okay to go and to have a go at this. And this year, this cohort, they were never going to be last year's cohort. Last year, I brought, I got the innovators. I got my crew. Uh, the people I ran with last year would be the kind of, uh, you know, if I was captaining a crew of ensigns out on a star ship somewhere, that would be the crew I'd want. The volunteers who stuck their hand up and said, "Hey, we want to go with the." We want to go do the thing that hasn't been done in a subject that hasn't been run. We want to go first. We're, I mean, let's do this. So they're a good crew. I think they're going to, uh, we will get there. Uh, I'm really staying, I'm feeling really good about this semester. Uh, even if it just tanks and goes pear-shaped, I've done a lot of things I wanted to, to try and I'm getting to push in areas and directions around technology that I wanted to explore and I'm trying things out to see how they go and getting and I know that I'm overwhelming and I know that I'm terrifying and I know that there are going to be people who are going to go this is the worst experience of my life whilst they're experiencing it and a few years later we'll come back and go you know that was quite no I, I learned a lot from that Particularly, uh, e-marketing, the biggest challenge I face is that I'm making people do 
things. I'm making people create projects. I'm making the theory into the practice. I'm putting that reality hard, that hard, unyielding reality. I'm handing them off the hardware and saying, let's go break that. Let's go play with that. But if you're doing it, if you're skimming this at the surface, all you're going to see is like, oh, it's pointless. I, I, he only covered the basics. It's like, I said, here are the fundamentals. Go use them. Go turn that fundamental, I know a bit about marketing. I know the marketing mix. Okay, prove it. Create me a product. Price that product. All right. You got those two down. Where are you going to put it? How are you getting it to your audience? Who is your audience? Tell me about your audience. What's your market segmentation look like? Getting people to act on the theories that they're otherwise writing assignments about and writing essays about, that's what this subject is. That's like it, that's part of its terror. That's part of its sheer, oh my God, what am I doing? But it's not there to, it's there because I want to give people a chance to test drive, to do things safely, to have an environment where they can go call for backup and the backup is the giant tank cat that is me in my full academic mode to come in going, all right, what are, we, what are we trying to achieve? All right, this is what I can do to help you. And this is, here's some support material, here's some guidance, and also, you know, here's me telling you what you did right and how it's worked. Because the last thing I want to say is, uh, I think I'm working on this season. Like I've got a goal for myself and my teaching is I'm trying to change... Uh, a bit of language I use, and it's the what went wrong to what could have been done differently. And it kind of went wrong tonight, in the old sense. Um, I didn't clarify, and it, if I was to rerun tonight's show, I would have done the first exercise differently. Uh, I didn't clarify a task, and I didn't make it, I realised, and uh, it's probably on video, I had a moment of absolute I can't replicate the facial expression. I had a moment of realizing that I didn't include an instruction that I usually include. Now, I've run this exercise four times as of tonight. So when I say usually include, the last three times I did this exercise, I put this instruction in. And I had this moment of going, I didn't say the word. And we get back and we do the debrief and the students told me about that. And... The two exercises we were going to run, and I, they, one group ended up merging both exercises. So I took the time to go, okay, how would I do this? This has gone not the way I expected. How do I do it differently? And really tried to model the behavior I want to encourage my students is to be able to look back at something and go, not, I did this wrong, but I could do this differently in future. Now, obviously, there are points where you make mistakes that you have to that you should apologize for and you make errors and errors are things that you correct and mistakes are things that you try and prevent or you go and look at the processes that got you to you know, if your intention is uh, your intentions are material to your outcome but your outcome is negative for other people you want to go fix that but if you come back to that outcome and say okay how do we do differently next time how do we make certain that we know that this outcome, this input has led to a, an outcome we didn't want. How do we do it differently so we get a different outcome? Now, we can't say for certain that we'll get a good outcome, but we can say for certain we'll get a different outcome. So that's the intention, is to go and try and work around that as a mindset, uh, to model the behavior, to be able to say, all right, this is a 2.0. This is an iteration. I have tried something. It hasn't gone the... It hasn't achieved everything I wanted to do, so I'm going to reissue it as a 1.1. I'm going to try again. Or I'm going to extend. We're going to do a 2.1, a 2.2, 2.3. We will keep iterating. We're going to model that behavior. Because ultimately, a little frustration. Again, yeah, final thing. I, the longer I'm in the game, and I'm probably going to crack. It all goes well, professionally, personally, and life expectancy, Lee. Um, I started teaching when I was 25. Feasibly, I would could finish up when I'm 65. 
I could spend 40 years in this business. And in that 40 year period, things have changed and things will change and things will be different. Well, one of the things we're kind of losing and I'm desperately trying to hang on to and figure out how to do is how to give people the opportunity to go make a mistake and come back from it. And I don't fully, I haven't developed that to its fullest potential yet. I haven't got it right um, because it's an evolutionary thing. It's also creating against the culture of the time where everything is tracked. And I was looking at this YouTube video of me talking about Moodle, um, training people to use Moodle and saying, for God's sake, stop running analytics on the help function. Uh, don't let us know that you're tracking us when we go hit F1 to find out how to know more. Don't let us know. If you must track to find out what needs to be improved, for God's sake, don't tell us that you're tracking us making mistakes. Don't tell us that you're monitoring our every behavior because we'll hawthorn the hell out of ourselves. Uh, but it also means that we won't explore. We won't take a risk if we think it's going to go on our permanent records. Okay, most other people won't take a risk if they think it will go on their permanent records. Dumbass here will, and does, and frequently, and is currently, doing things full in the knowledge that it's on its permanent record, and whoop dee. So, my view is, at the end of the day, if there is a permanent record of all the dumb things I've done, all the sh things I've tried out, all the rules I've broken, every rule that I've had to introduce to counter me, awesome! <laughs> Someone documented hell! <laughs> So I've documented my life and, you know, I'm fabulous. So, yeah. That is the state of the cat. Uh, it has been two days into week two. It's been a really good run. Uh, really pleased with how it's come out this evening. And lots of thinky things. Um, I'm trying to, again, the thing I'm trying to practice is if I start by doing these videos, I start by talking out the things, then maybe I'll get better at writing the things and maybe I'll get better at sort of, I'm crap at reflection and I don't like it and I don't, but, I'm, correction, I was never trained to do it well, I'm teaching, I'm trying to teach myself to do it better, it is a thing that I want to do differently, I don't know what the outcome will be yet, because I haven't got to that part, but it is a thing that I want to do differently, and the hell of it, I'm going to give it a try, and I'm going to try doing it differently. Because I know what it not reflecting looks like. It looks like my life. So this whole reflecting thing, it's new. I'm trying it. And these videos are part of that. So thank you for being a listener. Thank you for being my audience. Because I'm actually really cool and okay with talking to a webcam. But it's nice knowing there are people out there. So hey to the people who are watching this. See ya in the sequel. That's the sign-off I've been using on all my subjects. Um, till next time. Cat, out.